You ready? Yep. Yeah. Roll call for the City Council meeting of Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014 at 9 a.m. Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Brennan, Mrs. Rancunzo, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Winarski. All please rise for a moment of silent meditation and Pledge of Allegiance. This morning we ask that we remember those in our community, uh, locally and globally, that are less fortunate in any and every way. Um, we ask that we remember those who are, uh, have lost loved ones since the last time we were in these chambers as well. And we ask our God and Creator to give us the wisdom and the proper information to make the best decisions for the citizens of the city of our community. Pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of minutes for the meeting of March 19th and bills for payment on April 4th and April 11th. Uh, Mr. Brennan. Mrs. Rancunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mr. Mirsky, Mr. Winoski, Mr. Witherspoon. Uh, citizens to be heard, Mr. Randy Barnes. Morning, Council President, members of Council, administration, guests those with us electronically. My name is Randy Barnes, 109 Walton Point. I wanted to speak today about economic development. I sent an email to council members. I'm not sure if anyone had took the time to read it. Uh, I do want to first of all thank the five of you that were able to clear your schedules and make it to the public officials meeting a couple weeks ago about the Harbor Creek Rail Yard. Uh, one thing that wasn't talked about there was the cost of that meeting. And the cost of that meeting to the taxpayers was about $10,000. The reason why I say that is because uh, it wasn't talked about much, but a firm by the name of McCormick Taylor has a contract for $161,000, and their job is to solicit public input on the rail yard. And the reason why I say that meeting cost the taxpayers $10,000 is because they are committed to hold up to 16 meetings. 16 meetings into 160,000 is $10,000 a meeting. What's interesting about those 16 meetings is six of those meetings are for the developer, the Greater Erie Industrial Development Corporation, also known as Develop Erie. Six of those meetings, or about $60,000 worth of the taxpayer's money is spent to do dry runs, dress rehearsals with the developer so they know how to prepare and present their plan to the public. So while we thought that we were paying a big tax increase to repair our roads and help our roads late last fall, some of that money goes to, well, about $60,000, goes to helping the developer prepare his presentation. Oh, prepare his presentation. So, I don't know about how you feel, but I think $160,000 could pave a few miles of roads in the city of Erie. But instead, it's going to be used to hold these public meetings and do these dress rehearsals with the developer. Also, the presentation boards. The $160,000, the presentation boards that some of you saw there, that's part of McCormick Taylor. That's what they're charged to do is prepare those presentation boards. I used to come down here and talk about how that we compete with places all around the country for economic development. I realized recently that the city of Erie competes with Harbor Creek Township, the borough of Albion, for economic development. And why do I say that? It's because the uh, city of Erie has uh, excess capacity of water. So you would think if there was going to be economic development that needed water, like a pellet maker or a smelting plant, that maybe it would be located somewhere in the city of Erie. Well, Erie kind of lost out because the smelting plant and the pellet maker are targeted to go to Albion. Now, does Albion have an excess supply of water? No, they don't. 
In fact, they need like about uh, $22 million to run a water line from Lake Erie to Albion so they could accommodate a smelter or a pellet maker. Now, why is it the city of Erie gets overlooked for these things? I would suggest, and it's just a suggestion, that the, the seven of you as a body maybe start to lobby these people that are deciding where economic development takes place. In that email I sent you, I sent you a picture of the uh, CSX property over at uh, Downing. If you go over to Downing, you don't have to walk on their property. You stop at the Downing entrance where it says CSX on the sign, and you look down there, and you'll see three rail sidings to the south of the main tracks. And what those rail sidings are for is to bring in rail cars, tankers, whatever kind of rail car, and put those on the side, and then deliver those around the city of Erie. Or if there's, like at the biofuels, if they have full tankers, they take them up there, set them on the siding, and then a train picks them up. What's interesting is most of the time when you go by there, there's hardly anything on those rail sidings. But yet, at the meeting that you five of you were able to go to, you didn't hear anyone talk about the option of a million dollar side loader and loading containers at Downing. That's all it would cost. I mean, for a million dollars, you buy a side loader and you're, you're starting to load containers at Downing as soon as the side loader gets here. Now, granted, maybe there's not room for a two mile long train, but I would suggest to the council that I don't think we're going to be loading two mile long trains worth of containers out of Erie very often on a weekly or daily basis, but I think there may be some container opportunities. And a side loader does anywhere up to 50 to 100,000 lifts a year. So again, uh, I would like to suggest as the representatives of the people of the city of Erie, knowing that we need economic development and we need more jobs and we need development in the city, that, that you lobby this economic development corporation up in Knowledge Park and, and ask them, say, hey, you know, Erie, we're still here. You know, uh, you know, we still exist. And there's an awful lot of acreage between IP and the Savakio Park and, and uh, what's going to be the Lord Corporation development land there. A lot of places for development in the city of Erie. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, I did skip one item. Uh, let me take care of that right now. Are there any requests for repository sales? Are there any requests for repository sales? Are there any requests for repository sales? Hearing none, citizens to be heard. This is Paul Musi. I live at Friendship Towers. And I just wanted to know when I mentioned it to Cass before about 38th and Liberty there, where the, the bus stop is, to see if we can get that, because it's concrete on the inside, because it has a bench in there, but it's not concrete from the road to the bus stop. It's all dirt. Uh, when you re when you have the E replace all that, you might as well do the curb and everything, because it's near the corner. And then I mentioned it about uh, on the closer to the building at tops here. You're coming down Liberty, they have a lift up sidewalk. I don't know if the city's responsible for that, but they're probably responsible for the. There's some blacktop and there's some dirt from the road to the the road to the right to the alongside of tops here. I think that all should be redone. And another thing I noticed when I came out the back way of Friendship Towers on 11th Street, when you come out on 11th to the sidewalk and the gates like right here and you just pass the gate when it rains you get a puddle of water there in the sidewalk I know they had to replace the sidewalk from the entrance out to the street because in the winter months it kind of lift up the sidewalk and that too I wanted to mention about that 
and I did call the streets department this morning that there's a pothole on French Street before you turn into the parking lot in the Friendship Towers, there's a deep pothole right there where the, the end of the apron, I did call them. They said, well, they'll put it on the list. But I did call a couple days ago and they never done anything about it yet. Thank you very much for letting me speak. Thank you, sir. Morning, Council. Morning. My name is uh, McDonald. My property is 19th and Reed. I, I want to talk about that incident at uh, the center over there on 18th and Holland. Those kids are hungry to try to. Not, not all those, those are some 21, probably 25 year olds who are up there looking for a job. <laughs> That should concern you. Those, those kids want some money in their pockets. You want some money in your pockets. They don't want to go out there stealing. They willing to work. You all could make some jobs for them over the summer. There's a lot of things out there that the city need to be doing that they're not doing. You got more potholes out there than Carter got pills. 12th Street, that road is not that old. You go out through there, the way that Black Top then broke up. I remember back when they put Black Top down, back down the road there, piece. It stayed down there a long time, but this they're putting in now, jump out before they get it in good. They're not putting it in right, for one thing. Is it, it looked like you're there, uh, work guaranteed. We'll be back and take care of this. But uh, if they would do it the right way, they might not have to go back right away. Uh, if they would blow those holes out, take some fire and dry them out, and put some of that tar in there to hold that black top down, you're not doing nothing the way they're putting it down now because when a car run over it, it pulls it right out of the road. I, you know, pull it right up, back up. And you go through there, you hit them rocks coming up here in your car. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, they could do a better job, but do it the right way. I know they used to do it like that. They don't do it like that now. They just, it could be full of water. They don't blow the water out. They just back up there and drop some of that Black top in there, maybe roll over it, I don't know, hit it with the shovel and keep going. That's a waste of time. That's a waste of our taxpayers' money. You're you always talking about we need more taxes. You're going to tax, tax us into a depression. That's all Joe knows is tax, tax, tax. It, taxes ain't every, it's, it's what you do with them taxes after you get them. Uh, it just, I don't know. But uh, that little incident up there, that center up there, you don't want that to happen. You don't want things like that to happen. If you would do better for our kids, they won't be acting like that. I know they want some money in their pockets. That's why they came out. They need some money, and, and Mr. McAdory always tells you, so those kids need some money, but you all are not paying no attention to him. But I, I promise you this, you will. It'll, it'll come back to haunt you. you. You got to look further in your nose. You should look into this, but this is not important to you. But it's one of the most important things that should be on your mind. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry for y'all, because 
those kids getting in trouble is really won't be their fault. They, they don't want to go to jail, but they'll go to jail trying to find a job. Y'all can put some jobs out there. Y'all got money. Y'all can find some money somewhere. You find money for everything else I'm looking in here, and I don't even understand what's it for. You're taking money out of this fund, going into that fund. You better do something for those kids or you're going to have, you got the problem. The problems are there. They just haven't manifested yet. But when they start, ain't nothing you're going to be able to do about it. You Look, you nip it in the butt before it starts. Now you see what happened up there. You all should be working on that. In fact, you should have been working on that. What are you up there for? You know there's a problem in this city. And, and you know what the problems are. Those kids know that they're getting screwed. You're not spending a lot of that money coming in here. It, you're not putting none on them. There's a, hey, you go and you take people's houses, cost their taxes behind you. should give them a little money to help them pay them taxes. Them foreigners come in here. You, you, I, I don't know. We're here, we're the foundation, but strangers come in and get everything. When our soldiers come back, they don't get nothing. When our soldiers come back, they shouldn't have to pay no taxes. They done went and some of them come back with an arm missing, a half a head gone, leg, both legs. You know, you, you, the politicians don't have no compassion. Sound no compassion I don't until, think you heard the, until the shoe get on the other foot. Mr. Mack, I don't think you heard the bell. No, I didn't. No. I didn't hear it. it, it, it but, but I thank y'all for your time. Think about what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Mm. Good morning. Morning. Uh, my name is Michael X. Anderson. I reside at 1917 Camp Housing Avenue. And I came down here today to, I'm on this, uh, going out to the community and putting out posters. And I'm trying to put, a, put things in a proper context with people, all right? Uh, the faces you see on this poster are the young men that have been killed in Erie, uh, nine of them in the last year, all right? And one for everyone, okay? And I keep hearing people say, we have this teen problem. But each one of these gentlemen here was a young adult. They're 18 and above. And so if we are, people are thinking about trying to create policy on how to deal with a teen problem, but it's not the teenagers that are, that are killed on that poster. They're adults, which is a much more complex issue and it certainly can't be solved in a five minute talk here, you know? My thing is, a friend of mine put that together and I said, you know, that's powerful. And I said, we need to look at it in the right context here. Because you have grieving families, grieving friends, things like this, you know. But our young adult socialization problem that we have, if young people feel that they need to carry a weapon to socialize, then we have a great problem there, you know. Certainly we have teen issues, you know. But it's going to take us to simply talk to one another, uh, maybe think outside the box a little bit here, you know. I just know that um, it's just saying it's a teen problem and let's create teen jobs. And what type of teen jobs? See, what, you know, the fast food industry was supposed to be the teen jobs. But because there's uh, less opportunity for adults, those adults are now getting those jobs. So now if we're talking about, you know, uh, uh, teen jobs, what, what do they qualify for? from a, a skilled labor or unskilled labor standpoint, you know, th there's some dynamics to this thing. You know, and then how much are we going to pay them? You know? and, 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 and also the truth is, there's some people who don't want a job. There's some people who are criminal minded. There's some people who go, with it, go out with the intent to do harm to other human beings on a regular basis if, if they can. So all I'm saying is, is that this poster right here, you know, it just it, it puts a face to these young men. That's all. You know, and, but if we can stop calling it in the proper context, we have a young adult problem who are doing uh, 
And all these men died in different situations. They all weren't victims of crime. Some of them were even trying to per perpetuate crime, okay? But the impoverished mindset, it affects all. You know, it's not a single race here. You, we have the same problems in all parts of Erie County, Union City, Cory, Albion, Fairview. All of them have a young adult problem, period. All of them have a teen problem, period. But the problem is that too many of us think that it's not my neighborhood. Well, all I know is that every time a tragedy happens, right, it affects everybody. As the, as the gentleman who, who runs the, the, the Martin Luther King basketball showcase, when Rashid Anderson was killed, two weeks later, Two weeks later, our event was going on at Mercyhurst, and the overreaction by uh, some of those in leadership, worrying about an incident happening two weeks later, and none of our teams had anything to do with it at all. None of them. And majority of teams that were playing that day were from out of town. There were girls' basketball teams, most of them, uh, or, or boys' basketball teams, not even from Erie. But they couldn't see that. They were so afraid of an incident happening. And I understand that. I get that. Because nobody wants a tragedy on their university. Because those students should always feel safe on that university. All I'm saying is, is that I think our problem is, is that we, we overreact to something. We don't get into the, to the symptoms. And it's a lot more complex than what can be done in five minutes. I just wanted to just put a face to this, right, you know, because my heart, my heart. Peace. Brother Mike, um, it's not normal that we speak, and I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, the number that I had for you uh, last year, I called, and I didn't get through to oh, you. Oh, my cell phone was stolen. So, I, yeah, I need. <laughs> so, if you can, sure. there's a lady sure. in the office. Could you leave sure. your number so I can get sure. a hold of you? No problem. Sure. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm here. To, my name is Walt Soboleski. I live at 101 Sobieski Street, Erie, PA. I'm here to talk about this uh, residential rental property. The city claims I own a residential rental property. I have been getting billed for this since 2008 when this thing originated, I suppose, and I'm up to 400 bucks now. I live in my home. I bought it in 73. There's documentation of it. You even have it on the letter here. But I keep getting these things, these threatening letters that I'll be fined $500. Oh my goodness, I said, I, I need to address it. Well, I've been down here a number of times. I tried to speak to someone in the housing authority. I tried to, they, I, I spoke here with a woman. She sent me upstairs. They sent me back down here. And to my dismay, there's two gentlemen there that I think they combined, they had fourth grade educations. And she started asking them, weird questions like, do you have a telephone? Well, does your brother have a telephone? Well, their mother had just passed away, and they inherited a storefront. I'd be glad to show you this place. It hasn't changed in years. But I, I, just, I, I just felt compassionate. I had to stand there and listen to this. And when they came out and said, and when the woman asked them, do you have two bathrooms? Well. Yeah, one's my brother's and one's mine. And it's on the same floor. Well, you're a rental, and you have to pay. Now, my God, I, I exploded. I said, lady, I don't even want to talk to you. I just had enough of it. Can someone do something with this? The city says I have a rental residential property. I live there. My sons live there. They keep coming home. That's my problem. They lose their job. They can't pay support. They, uh, 10,000 reasons. And they just have nowhere to go. They can't afford a rent. So they live in my home for free. That doesn't tell me I'm a rental unit. And it says I'm exempt because I live in it. But I still get charged for it. So I'm not going to pay these fees. And they keep telling me I have to sign this 
giving them permission to come onto my property. The only people I want on my property is the firemen if there's a fire, because I pay taxes, or the police if there's a burglar. It's a simple item to, de to decipher here. Now, I'd like this stopped. How to do it, it's been a mystery to me. I don't know. I went to the mayor's office, I asked to talk to the mayor, I got the mayor's assistant. I didn't elect the mayor's assistant. He told me the mayor was in a meeting, the mayor was sitting right at his chair, tapping the desk with a pencil. I don't get it. Everywhere I go, I'm just not heard. And this, this is my first time here, and I hope it's my last. I, I don't need to be here. As, as for the garbage thing you're going to discuss today, well, in my neighborhood alone, there's, there's got to be in the last five years, there has to be 60 homes that aren't there. So there's no garbage bill there, and probably half of them owe for the garbage bill, if, if I'm not mistaken. Now, 60 homes? That's roughly 1000 to 1500 bucks a year. Tax base gone. We are having green grass there now. It's just beautiful. I wish they'd plant a couple trees. Maybe people can go sit on that grass in the summer and enjoy the shade. Can someone help me with this or not? I, I don't know what to do with it. I know you don't, you can't answer me or anything, but. Uh, could you have uh, asked the lady in the clerk's office to make a copy of that? Uh, then we can uh, go from that after coffee. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your time and your patience. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, I could take a look at that for. I'll talk to uh, the department about that and get back because I was just talking about a couple of these issues with a couple of people have been calling in with questions. So I'll I'll look into that and get back get back to them. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. My name is Daryl Fisher. I live at 611 West 16th. Um, I was compelled to come down here because I attended a meeting. I like to attend all the meetings, but I'm just unable to. But I believe the last meeting I attended, my wife had suggested that uh, we use this um, thing for the garbage by uh, requiring the licensed rental properties have their bills paid before they receive their uh, license. And I wanted to thank council for taking action on that. That was my wife's doing, not mine, by the way. But uh, since I'm here, I have a few other things I'd like to say. Uh, I, d I did notice that the nine gentlemen that were killed in the past year were of a minority status. And what I, some of what I've got to say here is uh, applicable that you know, you, those of you that are elected that sit in these positions, whether it be council, county council, or any position that, that the citizens of Erie find you fit to fulfill an obligation of an office, that you are pretty much a role model to the citizenry of the areas that you represent. And it's important that each of you, you know, whether you're outgoing, some of you will be leaving, you know, public service in a short while, but there's probably the majority of you sitting there that have a future, a potential future in, in public service. And it's important that each of you take it to heart that what you do and the actions you take, the decisions you make, effectively have direct impact on some of these people that need this role model in place to say, I, I aspire to be like that. You know, that's something I would like to do, to be a part of the community, to make things better, to help my brother. But I've got some written comments here so that I, I try to be as politically correct as I can. I don't always do that because I become emotional, so I wrote these things down. I believe that public servants <coughs> should be receptive and respectful to both their constituents and the suggestions that they offer to fulfill the obligation of the elected position that they hold. Because no one can attest to the validity of an unrealized idea. I believe our elected officials should be held accountable but the consideration of uncontrollable factors should also be a part of the equation. Honesty is one of the most common traits of a successful leader, along with transparency 
and the willingness to convey the facts and insight to your constituents builds trust among the constituents. Dishonesty is a major handicap, just as integrity and moral fiber are significant assets. Voters, taxpayers, prefer to support candidates who they feel can be trusted. In order to be a successful public servant, you cannot leave a trail of broken promises laced with unethical decisions as your reputation. There is truly no honor among thieves. Your reputation for ethical behavior and honesty, honesty will precede you. The better your reputation, the wider your pool of resources and supporters. Because once your career is over, your reputation will become your legacy. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Are there any other citizens to be heard? Are there any other citizens to be heard? Are there any other citizens to be heard? Hearing none, Mrs. Roby. Ordinances for final passage. Council file number 15869, official file ordinance number 15 2014. Appropriating the sum of $350,000 from unappropriated and anticipated revenue to be received from the PA Department of Communi Community and Economic Development for the Snoops Neighborhood Elm Street Program. Mr. Brennan, Mrs. Rancunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mr. Mirsky, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon. Motion by Mr. Jones and seconded by Mr. Kwiatkowski. The council file bill number 15869 and now known as official file ordinance number 15 2014 be finally passed by city council. Council file number 15870, official ordinance number 16, 2014, an ordinance amending the codified ordinances of the City of Erie Part 3, Business Regulation and Taxation Code, Title 1, Article 330, Landlord and Rental, Subsection 3303B2, Registration Required for Rental Units, and Subsection 3304A, Licensing Required for Rental Units, by amending Sections 3303B2 and adding new Subsection 3304A9 to condition the issuance of the Residential Unit, Rental Unit, and Residential Rental License on the requirement that all delinquent residential refuse fees associated with each be paid and accounts kept up to date. Mr. Brennan, Mrs. Rancunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mr. Mirsky, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon. Motion by Mr. Mirsky, seconded by Mr. Kwiatkowski, the council file ordinance bill number 15870, and now known as official file ordinance number 16, 2014, be finally passed by the city council. Council file number 15871, official ordinance number 172014, an ordinance appropriating the sum of $165,000 from the City of Erie Capital Fund unrestricted fund balance. This amount represents contributions from Gannon University, $100,000, and Erie Indemnity Company, $65,000, for the purchase of capital assets in the Police Department. Mr. Brennan. Mrs. Rancunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mr. Mirsky, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon. Motion by Mr. Witherspoon and seconded by Mrs. Rancunso that council file ordinance bill number 15871 and now known as official file ordinance number 172014 be finally passed by the city council.
That takes us to new business. Mr. President, I move the balance of the agenda. It's been moved by Councilman Jones. Second by Councilman Winarski. Any exceptions? Any separation? Go with number two, Mr. President. Separation number two. And number one. And number one. That's it. Okay, voting on moving the balance of the agenda, excluding number one and two. Mr. Brennan, Mrs. Rancunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Winarski, and Mr. Witherspoon. Uh, resolution, whereas Governor Thomas Corbett has proposed closing the Erie Office of the Pennsylvania Civil Service Exam Center in his 2014-2015 state budget, and whereas the closing of the Erie Exam Center would require all applicants for state civil service jobs to travel to Pittsburgh, for the next nearest test site and force some 5,000 job seekers each year to drive over 260 miles round trip to be tested. And whereas the closing of this office will again put additional roadblocks in the path of lower income job seekers who are trying to better themselves. So be there for it be resolved by the City Council of the City of Erie that we strongly urge our state legislators to provide the appropriate funds in next year's state budget to keep the Pennsylvania Civil Service Erie Exam Center open and forward copies of this resolution to State Senator Sean Wiley, Assemblyman Patrick Har Harkins, Flo Fabrizio, Ryan Bizarro, Greg Lewis, Kurt Senny, and Jack McGettigan, Commission Press Secretary, and Governor Thomas Corbett. Mr. Brennan, Mrs. Rancunso. <laughs> Mrs. Discussion. Mr. President. All right. Yeah, just, I just wanted to, um, I brought this forward because when I read it in the paper, I was um, deeply concerned. We pay state taxes just like everyone else in Pennsylvania. And, and as the fourth largest city in Pennsylvania, there are smaller municipalities that have civil service testing sites. And just like the ordinance says, um, you know, we have so many speakers that come up and talk about uh, minority jobs and to put a roadblock in to make them travel to Pittsburgh when, when some of them don't even have cars. I think it is um, an undue burden that for our taxpayers that um, is unnecessary and prevents people from seeking work, good paying jobs and um, quite frankly we utilize the civil service exam center in Erie. Um, you know, for, for our city, for our municipal workers, for our state workers, and um, uh, it belongs here in Erie. Uh, to move it down to Pittsburgh, uh, to close this site, uh, is the wrong message from Harrisburg that, that Erie matters and Erie taxpayers matter, and that's why um, uh, I put this forward. This resolution was sponsored by Mr. Mursky and seconded by Mr. Kwiatkowski. Uh, roll call for this resolution. Mr. Brennan, Mrs. Rancunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mr. Mursky, Mr. M Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon. By Wis Mr. Winarski and seconded by Mr. Mursky, resolved, whereas Ontario, Ontario Power Generation is proposing to construct an underground long-term burial facility for all of Ontario's low and intermediate level radioactive nuclear waste at the Bruce Nuclear Generating Station, some of which is highly radioactive and will remain toxic for over 100,000 years. This site is approximately one kilometer inland from the shore of Lake Huron and about 400 meters below lake level. Whereas water is our most important resource and should be protected and managed prudently. Whereas the Great Lakes are an irreplaceable natural resource containing 21% of the world's and 95% of North America's fresh water vital to human and environmental health. Whereas the Great Lakes are vital to the economic and agricultural well-being to both Canada and the United States of America. 
whereas Lake Huron and the connecting waters, including Lake St. Clair, are a source of drinking water for millions of people downstream in Canada, the United States of America, and First Nations. Whereas concern has been expressed by individuals, citizen and environmental groups and municipalities and counties in both Canada and the United States. Whereas under the 2012 protocol amending the agreement between Canada and the United States of America on Great Lakes water quality, the governments of Canada and the United States acknowledge the importance of anticipating, preventing and responding to threats to the waters of the Great Lakes. Whereas the governments of Canada and the United Nations share a responsibility and obligation to protect the Great Lakes from contamination from various sources of pollution, including the leakage, leakage of nuclear waste from an underground nuclear waste repository. Whereas placing a permanent nuclear waste burial facility so close to the Great Lakes is ill-advised. The potential damage to the Great Lakes from any leak or breach of radioactivity out far outweighs any suggested econo economic benefit that might be derived from burying radioac radioactive nuclear waste at this site. The ecology of the Great Lakes value will be on measure to the health and economic well-being of the entire region should not be placed at risk by storing radioactive nuclear waste underground so close so close to the shoreline. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Erie, Pennsylvania, in order to protect the Great Lakes and its tributaries, urges that neither this proposed nuclear waste repository at the Bruce Nuclear Generating Station nor any other underground nuclear waste repository be constructed in the Great Lakes Basin in Canada, the United States, or any First Nation property. Be it further resolved, the City of Erie, Pennsylvania urges the Government of Canada and the Government of Ontario to reject and seek alternatives to Ontario Power Generation's proposal to bury radioactive nuclear waste in the Great Lakes Basin. Discussion? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, naturally, the resolution obviously speaks for itself. Uh, very well detailed, uh, whether there are neighbors to the north, the east, the west, uh, we do not want to endanger or uh, possibly hurt our most major asset here in the city of Erie, and that's our water. And uh, the Great Lakes are a vial to our city and uh, as well as to the east coast here. So I just, just needed it, the public to be known what our neighbors to the north uh, were trying to do and all the other municipalities on the Great Lakes themselves to team up with us from Erie and uh, oppose us. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Brennan, Mrs. Sarankunso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon. That takes us to committee reports, Mr. President. Okay, thank you very much. We'll uh, make a little change today. We'll start off with our controller. Ooh. 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 <laughs> <Remix. laughs> oh. I don't know if everybody got a copy of this letter here or not. Rose can pass it out. But basically this letter is just uh, letting everyone know that um, the controller's office, we've completed and submitted all the necessary this state reports report. that are required. Um, by the deadline and in fact a week, a week and a half earlier than the deadline. So um, if copies are available in my office and here in the clerk's office if anybody would like to uh, view the reports. And I just wanted to let my uh, thank my staff for their hard work and effort that they put into completing these reports in a very timely manner. So it's all taken care of. And that's all that I have. Thank you very much. Administration. Other than the comment to Mr. Brennan that I'm happy to just chat with him after the meeting about the citizen to be heard earlier, um, I have no report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to follow up on um, a topic that 
keeps coming to us in the citizens to be heard from Mr. Randy Barnes regarding the uh, meeting that was held about the Erie Intermodal Rail Terminal proposed project. Um, as Mr. Barnes mentioned, Several of us did attend the meeting that was held to kind of give a briefing to the elected officials about this project and it was really a good opportunity for us because we'd had so many questions at the microphone about whether or not the city should be vying for this project to have it in the city, particularly around East 12th Street and around the McBride Viaduct and things like that. So we did, um, several of us attended the meeting and at the meeting some information came to um, light about the decisions that were made and the things that went into consideration for the locations of this proposed project. Now, I can't really speak to whether or not, how far along the project is or, or whether or not the project in total will come to fruition, but as a proposed project, they did consider a variety of sites and they enumerated at the meeting the sites they had looked at, including Conyot, Fairview, um, the IP site, Albion, and also the McBride Viaduct, um, East 12th Street area. And they talked about at the meeting the reasons behind the site selection with this Harbor Creek site. And I know there's a lot of things um, up in the air regarding this Wallbridge Road site in Harbor Creek um, and some concerns that the folks have out there. But the, they did explain that there was a, a set of criteria that they looked at to determine the sites for this rail terminal. Um, things like that the site had to have east and westbound access to CSX tracks and no other rail tracks in the same site. Um, no competing railroad companies in the same site. They had to have, um, I, I wrote down 3,000 feet, but I'm not sure if that's right, but to stop a train of uh, open track, they had to have two miles of track without any blocking roads or major roads crossing because they need to be able to essentially queue up a train and leave it set on those tracks while they would be doing loading, unloading. Um, they needed to avoid uh, crossing over any other railroad tracks. They needed to have proper zoning and they had to have uh, adequate roadway access because this would be bringing in, because it's intermodal, we're going to bring in trucks um, into the rail yard. So there was several factors that they looked at for deciding their sites and um, so that kind of helped us at least to see why there were some limitations in looking into a variety of sites. Just the fact that you have to have two miles straight of a train track to park a train makes it kind of difficult to do anything within the city limits. So that was their criterion. We obviously don't control the economic development group that is working on this project, or we don't really speak to whether or not their criterion is valid or not, but that's what we were given at our meeting so that we could understand what, what went into their decision making. Um, the ultimate, um, uh, outcome of the meeting was that certainly there are lots of concerns, particularly under over traffic flows and impacts on the traffic in the neighborhood surrounding the proposed site and also environmental impacts of having additional truck and rail traffic in those areas, um, emergency access and things of that nature. So there was a lot of things that the uh, economic development group committed to looking into and further studying. Um, they did mention at the meeting, and I just was checking with the clerk's office to see if they'd heard anything, but they mentioned at the meeting that there would be an April 3rd, which is tomorrow, public hearing, because this meeting was more designed for elected officials to hear about the project, but this would, was, was mentioned that there would be an April 3rd public hearing um, on the project to, to give public input. I haven't heard about that meeting scheduled. I don't know if anyone's heard if that got scheduled, but I did not get invited and I was at this other meeting. So I think I should get invited. So if there is a public hearing, <laughs> if there is a public hearing tomorrow, okay, somebody let us know. Thank you. Yes, the public hearing was scheduled for um, Iroquois, I think it was Iroquois High School. Tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow. What time? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I would I would assume it's in the evening, but I don't know what time. Okay. Try to find out. Thank you. Hey, let's hop over to Councilman Mursky. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a few things to report. Uh, streets pothole work continues. The repair right now. They're doing the cold patch, and um, like. Uh, the citizen to be heard said, you know, a lot of times the cold patch isn't meant as a permanent repair. And so it does come out and uh, 
but just be aware that you know everything that please call in your your request for you know a pothole and uh, I heard you know what he said about he called in two days ago and it didn't get fixed yet well there's a ton of potholes in the city of Erie it was an extremely uh, cold winter with a deep uh, freeze thaw cycle and uh, they will get to those I, I promise you that that they will get to them and if they don't give me a call and then we'll we'll get it taken care of um, the convention center I attended the Erie uh, County Convention Center Authority meeting um, they've had a, a pretty successful turn of events since the renovations with Erie Insurance Arena. They hosted the NCAA Women's Elite Eight. Um, if anyone caught, saw, saw the coverage on the television, people from out of town were very impressed with the facility, very impressed with the hospitality of our residents and I think and our downtown businesses that they frequented um, while they were at the convention or at the um, basketball tournament. That's a credit to our city and um, I based on what they said it looks like we'll probably be applying for that again in the future um, as it becomes available they also announced the other day that uh, Cirque du Soleil is coming to, to Erie um, this August so that that'll be exciting usually you only see those shows in Vegas and in the big cities of uh, you know and so that's really exciting for them um, Seawolf season starts this month so if you're a adventurous and you want to bundle up and get out there in early April and, and check out the Seawolves. Um, it's always a good time out there and um, they have a, a good team uh, that they want to put on the field this year but it takes fan support so please go out and support them. And finally, um, it was in the paper yesterday, the Bayfront Hotel that um, their uh, building will need an 11 foot variance so that's going to be something right now it's going to the zoning board and then uh, eventually it will come to us so um, they're looking for 11 feet so that they don't have to make it wider they can just uh, otherwise they'd have to go back to the drawing board and eat up more of the footprint of the property and they didn't want to do that so that'll be coming up on our plate uh, shortly and finally just one last thing um, this Saturday at East High School at 4 o'clock um, there's a movie about, um, it's a documentary that the, uh, one of the former students from East High made and it's about immigrants and their experience coming to Erie, about three people. Um, starts at four, so I uh, encourage anyone that would like to go out and see this. Um, uh, she's very proud of the movie she made and I told her, I promised her that I would announce it here. So um, if you have the opportunity, East High School, four o'clock on Saturday. Um, <coughs> There's a documentary about uh, an immigrant experience with three people uh, immigrating to Erie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilman Kotowski. Uh, yes, <clears throat> I attended the Erie Fire uh, Pension Meeting and uh, those uh, funds are progressing well. And uh, they're an active organization uh, trying to clear up a lot of uh, keeping the fund going in a proper manner. I also had the pleasure, along with Councilman Mursky, to attend the uh, East High ROTC banquet where there were present many young men and women. Uh, actually, probably I'd say about half of them were going into the service, but it was represented some of the finest students in all of Erie. And I think if you ever get a chance to attend that, you'd be very proud of the, the caliber of the students that come out of there. Uh, I also attended a meeting along with uh, many of us that went to the intermodal rail facility. And I'm still of the opinion that uh, if Harbor Creek don't want it, regardless of what, you know, I, I don't believe in the bobblehead theory, you know, where you shake your head left to right. Uh, coming from the Army, we, we always look at things as assess, adapt, and overcome. So if they don't want it, let's find out if we can take it here in the city. And maybe they're looking at a Cadillac plan, might have to sh settle for a Chevy plan. But uh, I think, you know, if there's any chance that the project is as good as they say it is and as valuable to the community, if one community don't want it, let's try to make it work or find out why it couldn't work here. Uh, I want to commend the snowplowers. Uh, received a lot of phone calls, both on my taxpayer hotline and at home. Uh, no one had one complaint except to say they wish that the plows didn't block in their driveway. But uh, a tribute to them was this last snowstorm where they had my street cleared out at least twice by the time I woke up in the morning. So they did a, they've been working hard and I think uh, no one has any complaints about them. I want to thank council for passing the landlord bill. I think it's a first step, like I tell people, only the first step and a long step. And I still remain committed that, uh, you know, we can deal with the problems of tenants who pay their bills and, 
If the landlords aren't submitting that money to us, then I, th I remain adamant in saying that we should take them to court and sue them because uh, we should never hold the tenants liable for a landlord's bill. And along with Councilman Mursky, I support the uh, Civil Service Exam Center not being moved. We went through the same procedure with the VA hospital where they were gonna tell older veterans, uh, it's only 120 miles of Pittsburgh. Well, if you're in Erie from somewhere between November to March, mm -hmm. especially January and February, that 120 miles can seem like 260, I know that because my wife had surgery in Pittsburgh and it's not pleasant. So I think the legislators and especially the governor should come up here in February and take a ride down to the exam center in Pittsburgh and just see how pleasant it is. And to put those people at, uh, at risk and like as Councilman Mursky said, we're the, not only are we the fourth largest city, but we're in the Northwest corner. Geographically, it makes no sense to take out one corner of the state. And finally, uh, uh, just to paraphrase what you said, Bob, I ran into the Bentley basketball team, women's basketball team at a local restaurant, along with Jason Hicksonbaugh, their local reporter. And uh, I was surprised and, and very pleased that uh, they had a very good time in the city. They were treated well. And I think, you know, you hear a lot of things about our town, but they were, these were people from, um, I think Massachusetts, I believe. And there was another team there from, uh, Texas, I believe, and they were, they were all well pleased and, and very impressed with the city. That's my report. Thank you very much. Councilman Brayden. Thank you, Mr. President. I had a couple of meetings here I wanted to report on. Uh, I met with the um, Building and Permitting Department of the city uh, to really uh, address a lot of the uh, landlord questions I've been getting, you know, especially with the, um, the new uh, ordinance that we, we passed today. But there's uh, just a lot of questions on the inspections, uh, a lot of questions on uh, the permitting, and uh, yeah, I'm hoping to you know, resolve some of those or at least uh, get them addressed and get back to a lot of the, the citizens' concerns. But uh, there's definitely a, a huge value to the city in, uh, in, in doing what we're doing as far as the permitting program for landlords and also the uh, ordinance that we just passed. Uh, I want to report on the meeting at the, at the uh, Erie Zoo. Uh, their opening day was March 1st. There was a, uh, actually I think it was a record number of people at the first day. It was 5,500 people, one of the busiest days ever. They doubled attendance from last year, which is great. Uh, admission was free, which is also a good thing. Uh, their, uh, Annual fundraiser, the Galapagos is coming up on June 21st, but unfortunately it's already sold out. Uh, the zoo parade's coming up on May 17th at 10 a.m. Uh, hopefully everybody can attend that. Uh, the zoo started a Facebook page in October, and that's doing well, and the JMC Ice Arena had a successful season. Um, uh, attended the uh, Western uh, PA Port Authority meeting. Uh, the shipping... Um, uh, and, and dock wall renovations continue. That'll hope be completed uh, by the summer. Uh, there's a new pedestrian walkway that's coming down from uh, Cascade Street down to Liberty Street Park uh, where there's going to be a new traffic light installed. Uh, that's uh, under contract and is going to start, I think, uh, May, so that's kind of starting very soon, so you'll see some, some uh, construction occurring there. Uh, and last thing I wanted to just note is an upcoming um, uh, event coming up at the Collegiate Academy. There's a production of uh, Thoroughly Modern Millie. It's uh, April 10th, 11th, and 12th. Uh, it's seven dollars at the door. It's at seven p.m. And um, just proud to let everybody know that my daughter and son are in the production, and hopefully you'll see the talented cast and crew. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just very quickly, um, the BPRC Blighted uh, Property Review Committee will be meeting uh, next Wednesday morning, so I plan to be uh, in attendance of that meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, also, in relation to a few of us have mentioned about the the potential um, economic development opportunity that could take place in Harbor Creek, and uh, Councilwoman Kunso mentioned about several of the criteria and listed them uh, rather accurately um, on what it took to identify a site and why certain sites got uh, eliminated out of the process. And I think it's important to know that it wasn't just like random. This organization, Develop Erie, and Come up, came up with these random criteria. A part of it was a, it's a collaboration, and there's been a lot, a lot of work um, done with the partners and investors. And you would may be surprised if you don't know how difficult and challenging it is to work with uh, a rail system or a rail company. Um, they have very much. Uh, a lot of their own criteria that they bring to the table and the railway component of 
uh, any location uh, is integral in making sure that happens. So I think uh, it was good to hear that some of those criteria, good for us who had not been informed at that level about the project to hear that information. Um, also, this is kind of maybe not random, but there's something that dropped in my mind. I know we do a lot of, whether it be uh, application for grants that uh, support portions of our community, uh, we don't have the weed and seed program anymore, so there's been a lot of different efforts to, to try to deal with some of the crime, not just crime, but some of the antisocial, not, not so positive uh, uh, situations that are happening in our communities and neighborhoods. And a lot of that money often, and I'm not criticizing this in a destructive way, but a lot of that money often goes to the police department um, for more enforcement or for overtime or or more patrols, which I think has definitely has its place. But I think there's, you know, in the next, you know, maybe in the coming years, we could really look at uh, more of a combination of interacting uh, with some of the organizations that are already locally working uh, in that in those communities. Um, you know, there's a different concept. I have a different concept of community policing beyond just sending more police in the community. And so I think there's some more ownership that can be placed on some of the citizens and some of the organizations that are already active in the community. Uh, but it does take, uh, you know, resources. And those groups are being cut tremendously. Again, not to anyone's fault in this building or, or even in this community. Uh, but it may be some different realigning and some creative ideas of partnering more than just putting more police for over, with overtime opportunities um, in the streets and in neighborhoods neighborhoods in a traditional way. Uh, also, uh, I think many of us have heard uh, in, the, in the media recently that the, the county executive and some members of county council, some other uh, legislators, and uh, a couple of organizations in the community are looking to uh, do an expansive uh, summer youth work program, which I think is tremendous, uh, and I'm 100% uh, in support of that. Um, with that said, uh, we're going to continue, uh, myself and the committee that I've been working with, we're going to work with that group. There's no reason to duplicate uh, services, although there, you know, there are, what we found is that there's, it's more than just giving kids a job in the summer. There are a lot of other components. And so the group that I'm going to be working with, hopefully we'll be able to bring some more support around training, even around some mental health assistance, even around some other social challenges to be able to support these students uh, after they're done with their work, work time in the summer if they need that kind of additional family support. <clears throat> uh, someone mentioned about the young people at a, at a local event. Um, you know, we're working hard. A lot of people in the community are working hard. It's not just council or the mayor. Uh, it's, a, it's a collaboration. And uh, there are a lot of community organizations that are working with local elected bodies and elected officials to do what we can for not just the youth in our community, for every uh, member in our community to make uh, life better and make life easier. Uh, finally, uh, with the, in relation to the, the ordinance that we passed today in second reading, uh, I, I support it in principle. Absolutely, I mean, I was in, even in the budget session at the end of last year, um, we had some pretty good conversation around um, attacking this um, refuse delinquency issue or lack of payment issue through many different means, and the landlord ordinance is one of them. I just do think there's still some bugs to work out. Maybe there's some things we can make tighter. Maybe there's some things we need to look at from another angle. So I think we'll continue to do that. In, uh, as council, we do have liberty to expand or, or to adjust whatever ordinances we pass uh, through the appropriate process. So um, I think it's a good, good start and a good part of a continuing process. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councilman Wynarski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, no co committee reports this morning, just a few items I'd like to touch on. Uh, naturally, the citizens coming up regarding these potholes and the streets, uh, all I can ask at this point, please be patient. Uh, we're in that transition time where it's still too cold to start with blacktop or uh, hot paving it's it's going to be cold patch for the next month or two and yes it's a quick fix but that's all we have the frost got so deep this year that uh, we're going to be battling this even though it's uh, 50 60 out today still three foot underground we're still frozen and actually things possibly may get a little worse here in the next couple of weeks before they get better but um, Talking with uh, Doug Mitchell, they'll be definitely on top of this and do what they can. Uh, 
large trash pickup, uh, take advantage of it. <laughs> uh, we got four weeks here in April to clean up your yard, your house, your basement, your garage. Take advantage of it. Uh, um, it's a nice service the city offers to its citizens, and uh, there's nothing. I know I mentioned it before, why people stick a couch in front of their house in the middle of January is beyond me and think it's going to disappear, but uh, please take advantage of it while the getting's good. Uh, one other item, uh, just want to congratulate the Convention Center Authority, the Erie Otters, and the City of Erie with the uh, contract extension with the Erie Otters. Uh, they have been a asset and a partner to the city, and uh, record crowd this year at the new insur Erie Insurance Arena and uh, they're still in the playoffs and having a great year so thank the citizens for their support for the uh, Otters and the Convention Center Authority as well as they got our support. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, Councilman Wynarski. <laughs> Meetings adjourned. City Council adjourns at 10.14. Oh, report by the President? Meetings adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brennan, Mrs. Saran Kumso, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kudowski, Mr. Mursky, Mr. Winarski, Mr. Witherspoon.